Hello friends, welcome back. Today, we're going to create a stateless functional component. Components are the core of React. Everything in React is a component, and here you will learn how to create one. There are two ways to create a React component. The first way is to use a JavaScript function. Defining a component in this way creates a stateless functional component. The component of state in an application will be covered in later challenges. For now, think of a stateless component as one that can receive data and render it, but does not manage to track changes in the data. We'll cover that in the, se the second way to create a rack component in the next challenge. So to create a component with a function, you simply write uh, a JavaScript function that returns either JSX or null. One important thing to note is that React requires your function name to, be, to begin with a capital letter. Here's an example of a stateless functional component that assigns an HTML class in JSX. So here we have, um, we've got it commented out at the top and it just says after being transpiled, the div will have a CSS class of custom class. So here we've got constant uh, of the demo component and inside there we're re returning a function and we're returning the uh, a div of custom class. Because a JSX component represents HTML, you could put several components together to create a more complex HTML page. This is one of the key advantages of the component architecture React provides. It allows you to compose your user interface for many separate isolated components. This makes it easier to build and maintain complex user interfaces. The way I like to describe this is like, if you're on Facebook and you've got your news feed going and then you've got a private message going on this other th thread this the react front end library makes it so that your um, component of your news feed can be rendering while your component of your you know side conversation a direct conversation is going on in those same one and that way that's why you can have multiple things going on and then your notifications might tip off because that is another jsx component at least that's my estimate uh, the actual um implementation of facebook technology might be different uh if you were to dig into it uh, but that's the way that i think about this um that's the reason that they built uh react so uh yeah, it makes it easier to build and maintain complex user interfaces. The code editor has a function called my component. Complete this function so it returns a single div element which contains some string of text. So yeah, here they've got, we're basically gonna match this guy. What we wanna do is we want our function of my component to return. And then in here, we're going to add our single div, right? So the simplest way to write that would be well, the simplest way to write it would be like this, and that would be uh, returning, we would consider this rendering a single div. So it returns a single div element which contains some string of text. So while, well, you we can't use this because the only time that you can ever use this closing div is if there's no context in there. So we need to do a closing div, and then we want to have it uh, just, I guess, what do they say? It contains some string of text. So we could say some string of text. And now we're rendering a component function and which returns a single div element that says some string of text inside of it. Um, yeah. And uh, we want to end our return statements with a semicolon. Uh, the text is considered a child of the div element, so you will not be able to use a self-closing tag. Okay, so that's just saying you can't use a self-closing tag because it's uh, we're returning a div that has uh, content within it. And so, yeah, I would actually write it like this because I like having things being properly indented. Uh, we run the test and that passes. So a big mistake here, if you're not adding the return, because what you need to do is make sure that your function, this is your function, and your function is returning the div element. Um, I mean, this could, I think that this could be constant. It needs to be constant. I don't think we could go um, function because it needs to be a constant. This would essentially, in terms of just JavaScript, okay, yeah, so this is actually, we're not making it a constant, which might break some things in the, in the future, but this is how it looks in just the um, old school JavaScript way that we learn. And this is actually still passes the test. So we're um, declaring a function. So when you see this format, it's just being rewritten. It's just uh, that other way that I just showed you written in a different way. And so, uh, yeah, there you go.
Hope you guys enjoyed this one, and we'll see you in the next lesson.